For a long time, I thought that the way to remember what I was reading was to just sort of think really hard and then go and maybe make a few highlights about what I was learning. After a lot of trial and error, I found that this just isn't true. Eventually I found active reading, a process that involves taking notes and really engaging with the material, is the only way to fully internalize and understand something well. I've since found this five-step process that makes active learning easy and repeatable. It does take more time up front, but it really has led to much better outcomes for me in terms of grades and long-term understanding. Here are those five steps that make active learning easy. To get started, I'll find some digital version of what I'm trying to read and upload that to my notes on my laptop. I can either do that by just dragging in what I'm trying to learn, or I can go to the file option here and then either upload a PDF or a document website and more. Here, I'll upload these lecture notes that I've been trying to read. So the first step of active reading is to just go and find the important ideas and highlight them. Focusing on the important ideas really does matter here. Most ideas I found to just not be very important when I'm trying to get an understanding of some topic. Either they're too low level where they're not relevant right now, or they're just extra stuff that I won't even remember in the first place, or maybe they just don't actually contribute to the way I want to think about this idea and understand it in my own head. I found that there are generally three kinds of things that are reliably useful to understand. Let's look at them in these lecture notes together here. So the first are concepts. Ideas that I can attach other ideas to and start to grow some understanding. Here I start to notice a few, like the monolithic kernel and a microkernel and virtual machines. Here they're actually sort of nicely organized into the section headers. As I continue trying to read these notes, I start to realize that they're mostly talking about a trade-off between these monolithic versus these micro kernels. So I'll go and write that down. I can write down the pros of this monolithic kernel here, and maybe one of its cons is that if there's a bug, then I guess the entire thing crashes. And I can also write down a con of microkernels, such as this, I guess, high communication cost between modules. Here you can see I'm taking entire quotes and highlighting and linking them in my notes. Memorizing the quote is almost never useful in itself, but having them linked in my notes does often help me to identify important ideas and just sort of check that my understanding of them is correct. The real work starts happening in step two, taking notes and linking them together. I organize my notes with the concept descriptor framework. So I'll write down the name of the concept here, the microkernel, and then I'll organize any of the related ideas underneath it. Organizing my notes around concepts helps to provide an easy structure for me. So I just identify a term that I want to understand, organize it on the left of my notes, and then move everything that's related to it underneath. You can learn more about the concept descriptor framework from the video that I've linked in the description. Of course, the specific framework is something that's up to you. What's important here is having a framework in the first place, an easy way to structure your notes where you don't need to really think about the notes themselves, where you can think about what you're trying to learn and then slot it into something that will help you to structure your understanding to lead to long-term mastery. Now for each of the highlights that I made above, I'll go and start integrating them into my notes. You can see that for this microkernel concept here, I'll go and give it a definition and then link my source highlight. I can do so by clicking on the highlight, pressing Control C to copy, or just by clicking this button, and then pasting it into my notes with Control V. For this detail that I want to remember, one of the cons of the microkernel, I'll just write it down under my concept and then add this highlight. And then for the quote, I'll just paste it here so that I can see it later. Sometimes I'll use the highlight itself as part of my definition as well for context while looking at the notes or flashcards. So instead of writing out the definition of microkernel in my own words, I could have just linked the highlight. Generally, I do try to write it out in my own words though, as this helps me to figure out how to understand the idea myself. As I continue to read, I'll get a lot more notes like this. Each of these have been transformed from something in the author's mind to something that's in my mind, linked together by the highlight here so that I can understand them. Again, I can click on any of these highlights here to jump back from my notes to the source location. Very frequently, I won't actually understand something the first time I read it. I'll generally try to wrestle with it for a minute or two, but then I'll let myself move on quickly. And the way to make this work is by writing down to-dos that you then go and actually follow up on. I like to write down my to-dos in the notes itself here with the highlight. 
For example, I'm a little bit confused by what they mean by user space here, so I'm writing that down for myself to follow up on. Now, in this case, I think user space is actually a concept that I want to understand. Whenever I notice a concept that the current idea seems to be building on top of, I always find it's really important to write that down in my notes as well, and again mark that in red. I'll then sometimes go and try to immediately figure out what that concept or idea means, either by Googling it or asking ChatGPT. But again, if this is taking too long, I'll leave that in red and move on. Learning happens in phases, and I can figure it out later. If other questions come to mind while I'm reading, I like to also write them down in red. Generally, I won't actually follow up on these, but it helps to get me engaged and really thinking about the material. Here, for example, I'm sort of wondering, have people actually tried to make microkernel architectures? It's also pretty frequently useful to extract figures or images for what I'm trying to learn. Now, there's no such thing as a visual learner, but leveraging the visual parts of your brain can help to understand something more deeply. Here, I've also gone ahead and uploaded the lecture PDF. There are pretty useful figures here that help me to understand the monolithic and microkernel more visually. I'm gonna make an area highlight by holding Alt and dragging over to select it, and then pasting that highlight into my notes next to the relevant concept. Visualizing something is almost always useful. If I don't do it in my notes in the form of an image, I'll still try to do it in my head. Generally, this is often less about the visual picture and more about the story that the picture contains. Here, for example, I'm thinking about how information or data flows between these different subsystems of the kernel. My goal with active reading is to generally take what I'm learning away from the source here into something I can use either on exam day or in some project or in my life down the line. I found flashcards to be a really critical element to this. In the short term, they help me to really crystallize my understanding of what I'm learning. And in the long term, they help me to use space repetition to maintain and grow that mastery. Here, when I was defining these terms, I was actually simultaneously making flashcards. Anytime you type the double right arrow in RemNote, once and then twice here, or the double colon, both a definition and a card are created. You can see how that looks here in the preview. The system will auto test me with these with space repetition if I click on flashcards on the left or if I click on study at the top of my document here. For quotes, I like to make fill in the blank cards directly in the highlight itself. You can see that if I open the highlight, I can directly select the text that I want to test myself on and then press this button for fill in the blank. Or I can create image flashcards directly by clicking on the image here, clicking image occlusion, and then dragging a box over the part that I want to test myself on. I want to remember the different kind of subsystems that you would split out in a microkernel. So I would just drag a box over this, and then I can remember a few examples for myself. With these cards, I'll generally go and try to review them a first time the night after I learned them initially, and then continue to review them with space repetition over time. My goal is not rote memorization here at all. It's really just to decide how I want to think about this idea and then reinforce that in myself over time so that I can actually use it come exam day. Once I'm done taking these notes, then I'll go and take a break, but then come back and look through any of the to-dos or questions that I've written down for myself. I can do that easily here by opening up the right sidebar and then looking for any ones that I've highlighted in red or that I've written down to-dos on. For the ones that I follow up on, I'll often go and make flashcards from these again. If I was confused about it once, I probably will get confused about it again in the future. Those are the five steps of my active reading process. I identify important information and highlight it. I take notes about that in the form of concepts and their descriptors. I write down to-dos and questions while I'm reading to actively engage with the material. This all generates flashcards that I then go and practice and review myself on. And then finally, I'll go and look over the material again and review it later, either that day or in the coming weeks to re-engage with it and see if I'm still confused about anything. Just to make sure it doesn't go unstated, my main goal during all of this is not writing things down or highlighting or even worrying about my notes at all. It's just about thinking about the material and generally this involves like staring at the ceiling and being confused, trying to understand something. The notes in this process are just a trick and sort of a formalism that gives myself structure here so that I can continue steadily moving along without getting stuck or going and procrastinating and doing something else. And then when I'm done, I'll have simultaneously made highlights I can refer to in search, notes I can read, flashcards I can practice and review, and these questions I can go and follow up on. It always feels really productive.
Click the link in the description here to get a copy of the infographic to save for yourself, or go watch this other video that I have to learn more about the Concept Descriptor Framework.